What makes a great leader great? How do we create a high-performing team? And when we say leader, we mean everyone, because everyone is leading their own life. Will yours be a life by design or a life by default? Those are the big questions, and this podcast will answer them. Welcome to the Becoming Your Best podcast, where we help you apply the 12 principles of highly successful leaders, because great leaders will produce great results. Welcome to all of our Becoming Your Best podcast listeners, wherever you may be in the world. This is your host, Steve Schallenberger, and we have a great guest, very interesting on the show today. He has a terrific background, businessman, musician, public speaker. He's built dozens of web and mobile products. His product portfolio ranges from language learning products for the U.S. military to the most popular free CRM product in the world. Welcome, Christopher O'Donnell. Thanks for having me, Steve. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, we're going to have some fun today. And before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Christopher. He serves as a senior vice president of product at HubSpot, which he led from startup to a successful publicly traded company. He's a passionate individual about leading and supporting teams, really to build anything from developing tech products, creating rock and roll records, which we're going to hear more about in just a moment. Christopher is a frequent guest lecturer at MIT Sloan School of Management and major global corporations speaking on topics like leadership and team building to audiences of over 10,000. Outside of his day job, Christopher spends his time as a songwriter and a guitarist for his band, The Providers, with whom he has recorded dozens of albums across a variety of genre. So this is going to be fun today. So Christopher, tell us about your background. Where were, were you raised and what were the things that led you to get to where you are today? We'd love to hear about your background. Sure thing, Steve. Yeah, so I have, I have sort of an interesting meandering kind of career path and background. I've lived in New England my whole life. No, I was born in, in San Francisco. We moved within a month out to the East Coast. So I've lived out here my whole life, you know, within a couple hours of Boston in one direction or another through college and everything. And, you know, the two things I was drawn to more than anything else from a very early age were technology and music, you know, and, and even before I was old enough to get involved in technology, I was, you know, the kid in the basement with the glue gun trying to glue balsa wood together and, you know, build airplanes <laughs> and, and sort of build stuff, go-karts and, and everything else. So I, I, that's kind of my DNA is as a builder and a maker. And, you know, that, that sort of led me into the, at this point, 38 years old, you know, sort of building and leading teams. That's sort of the product that I work on, uh, although we also obviously have products that we build ourselves. And so along the way there, I went to school for actually literally computers and music. I got my undergrad degree in Rhode Island from Brown University in, in music, but specifically the major was computers and music, which felt like you know, maybe a little bit of a, a liberal, liberal arts vacation at the time, um, <laughs> though it was really fun and really challenging. And I got to learn foreign language and I played a lot of music and, and did a lot of coding and all this kind of stuff. I didn't quite know how that was going to translate into a career. And here, you know, a couple decades later, it actually has. And those are the things I spend my time, my time doing. So I've been living in the Boston, Cambridge area, working on technology products the last 10, 15 years and really loving it. You know, and outside of that, I'm in a band called The Providers. We record a lot of music, always writing music and recording music, publishing that. People can learn about that at theproviders.com. And beyond that, you know, I'm a, I'm a husband and a father and family guy. I think that that kind of comes first for all of this. It sure does. Well, that's great. Good priority. So you mean you actually go out and do gigs with your band? Tell us about that. Yeah, I, well, it's funny because we're <laughs> we're really like uh, an old school Steely Dan studio band. That's how we spend our time. You know, it's the songwriting and production and the creative process of building the recordings. And we don't actually play live, which is interesting. I think at, at some point we will, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. It's this funny atmosphere where 
it's almost like 1974, you know, being in a big recording studio with kind of grumpy, opinionated session musicians coming in to play their parts and, and trying to get the whole thing to, to sit just right and, and get that, you know, get that magic moment that you're looking for that you can keep forever as a recording, you know, and it's in a lot of ways very similar to what I do at work. Oh, that's great. And, and, and you enjoy it and it works? I love it. I mean, I love <laughs> making things and I love storytelling. Product management, my day job, there's a ton of storytelling involved in modern leadership of, of creative individuals. It's really about story. It's really about context. And I think the best vehicle possible, at least for me and my own human experience, to hear a story and experience a story and all of the associated emotion is really through song. And so that's kind of, you know, on a personal level, the goal I will keep reaching for is, you know, the great American rock song. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's good. And tell us about HubSpot. How did you become involved with HubSpot? Tell us about the adventure of HubSpot and what's happening today with it. Yeah, HubSpot is just a, a fascinating enterprise and community and ecosystem. The company was started perhaps 14 years ago by a couple of fellows, Brian Halligan and Darmesh Shaw, who are still leading the company today, who met at MIT Sloan and had this insight that was just really remarkable and really brilliant, which was that the way that people shop and buy has fundamentally changed forever. And for small businesses on a limited budget with limited resources, it was going to be really hard for people to pivot and stay in business. In the 80s and the 90s and the early aughts, you know, you could still put Yellow Pages ads out. You could go to trade shows. You could, you know, knock on doors. You could do these kinds of things and generate business. And in the modern world of today and, and even of 10 years ago, where do we go to research products? Well, we go to the search engines. You know, we go to our friends for referrals. We, it's a totally different power dynamic that puts the buyer in control. All right, so where's the business opportunity in that? Build software tools. You know, build a, a unified all-in-one platform so that a business of really any size can adopt these best practices, can have a website, can have an email marketing list, can have a CRM, can have, you know, customer engagement tools all in one place. And that's what they asked me to come help build when I joined the company about eight, nine years ago. My time here has been entirely on the product side, though I find it fascinating to watch the other functions grow. I find it fascinating to learn about sales and service and finance and marketing and all these you know, wonderful folks that I get to work with. My time has been in the product side working with engineering, working with design, and trying to be very customer-driven and understand what the market is looking for from us and translate that into a product that really delivers and delights on that promise. And where we are today, we're, we're a publicly traded company, market cap over $7 billion at this time. So we're, we're a small cap company. We've been in the public market for a few years. And that's been really fascinating for me to see You know, from the inside. I joined around employee 200, 230, something like that. And now we're over 3,000 employees. We have eight offices around the world, from Cambridge to Dublin to Tokyo, you name it. And so it's, it's just fascinating to see all of these departments, you know, and the green shoots of all of these ideas turn into, you know, a really growing, thriving company and customer ecosystem that largely gathers around our annual event that we call Inbound, which is in Boston in September. People can check out inbound.com. We have great speakers. We've had Michelle Obama come speak, Serena Williams. We've had some really amazing people come and you know help lead our community. It's just a fascinating movement, even more than a product or an enterprise. I'll bet that's been amazing and gratifying to see where it's at today, because it's not easy to do that, is it? You know, I've really largely grown up here, but I can't imagine this is typical, and it certainly is not easy. It's very humbling. <laughs> very, very humbling. Yeah, that's great. Well, good going. And so, you know, we're talking about music and talking about business and growing business enterprise. What are the similarities, Christopher, between creating a rock and roll album and developing a successful tech product? It's a great question, and a lot of people find this, you know, to be an interesting topic. I've learned over the years, 
it's a question I get in a, in a lot of Q and A's. You know, you wake up in the morning and your goal is to build something that you can't quite describe <laughs> that is going to require a lot of creative contributors who probably are way better than you in their particular discipline than you are. And it's your job to get everybody in the room and build a vision and execute on that vision and to get the absolute best out of each of those people across all of these disciplines and to build something that without you there as the producer, people wouldn't do anything, <laughs> you know? And so that's the same challenge, whether you're going into the studio to, to record a song, make a record, or walking into you know, a high tech company to build something from scratch that people are going to love and share with friends and pay for and be very happy with, it starts at the same place. You know, what's the need? What's the vision? And how do you how do you let people project their own talents onto that vision? So that in the case of a song, the drummer understands, oh, okay, I see, I see the tempo, I see the feel, I see the sounds. I see points of reference from records that we're discussing here. I, I have an idea of where we're headed with this. How about this? How about I try this? How about I try this? And then on the tech side, you know, an engineer coming in and saying, oh, okay, so they're going to need something. Oh, this is going to be a mobile app. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, let's talk about it. How's it going to feel? Okay, here are the right technologies for that. Here's the right way for us to think about building and deploying that. You know, all of these things where you walk in and you're not walking in with all the answers. You're not walking in as the producer and saying, okay, here are your drumsticks. Here is every note you need to play. Now go play it. And you're not walking over to the engineer with, you know, a 500 page, page Word document saying, go code. You know, <laughs> here's, here's <laughs> essentially I've written the code for you in a, in a Word document. Now go pound it out on a keyboard. It, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, right. You know? engineers and designers and, and, you know, and also engineers on the, on the music side, by the way, there's a deep level of science and physics and engineering that happens in both of these things, whether it's acoustic or whether it's, you know, ones and zeros and the nature of the internet and, you know, fiber connections and all the rest of that. It's, it's very, very similar. What you want to do is you want to build an amazing creative team that pushes back on the vision, understands the vision, then gets very excited about it and brings ideas to the table that you could have never suggested to them. And then have the culture and the sort of the safety between those creative people across disciplines to try things, you know, and share ideas and go a little bit down this road, go a little bit down that road, show things to customers, get feedback and iterate. You know, and when I think about modern leadership and how people want to work and particularly how people just do their best, most fulfilling work, that's really the goal. And I think that if you adopt that mindset, I think you can make anything, you know, whether you're trying to make a rocket or you're trying to make a uh, dining room table, you know, or you're trying to make a jazz record. I think that these are all all of these challenges, interdisciplinary, creative innovation challenges benefit from this type of leadership mindset. Oh, great answer. I loved it. And, you know, this is an exciting time. And one of the things that Christopher just mentioned was, you know, you're not walking into the room with all the answers. If there's anything that describes today's world, that's it. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I mean, in the minute you think you have it figured out, even if you did have it figured out as a leader, even if you did have all the answers, give it 24 hours and the answers are going to change. I mean, just with the, the rate of innovation and the way the world is changing. People talk about imposter syndrome and feeling like you're not qualified to be doing your job these days. And I just don't think anybody's qualified. I mean, hopefully, you know, a neurosurgeon is qualified to do their job. But when it comes to information work, I mean, we're all really just trying to understand how to ride the wave and how to bring our best and become our best as that best in that target in those goalposts are, are constantly moving. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. We love that kind of language, Christopher. Words like your best, becoming your best, bringing the best out of people. I mean, that's really, oh, that's what brings excitement to life right there and to organizations. And we, we're in a great time. I mean, last week we also celebrated 50 years of man walking on the moon for the first time. And just think about what Christopher just talked about, of what creates this excellence, what creates a great outcome. Well, it all starts with a vision. Think about the vision that Kennedy articulated. 
about that we will send a man to the moon and bring him back safely within the decade. I mean, that just changed everything. That's, that's leadership. We were at Machu Picchu about a year and a half ago. Same principles. I mean, it's vision. You got to organize it. They didn't have all the answers. <laughs> got to figure out how to do it, set up a plan. And I like the science of engineering. You got to got to have apply some tools here and bring it all together to get that great outcome. So just thinking about this whole thing that we're talking about, from your experience, Christopher, what are the key elements to building sustainable, high-performance, creative teams? Well, I think you just really touched on some of the some of the best ones and that's a a great intro to to a great question setting a vision and a challenge and giving people the autonomy and the space within that challenge to do their best work is absolutely the foundation john f kennedy didn't know how to make a spacesuit (laughs) yeah you know and and people as i understand it you know across the nation, people say, well, this is preposterous. How are we going to do this? And it's, exci- <laughs> it's exciting, too. And then people started to say, well, you know, as a materials engineer, I guess we, we need a way to have fabrics that stick to each other. We need to do this, or we need a different kind of wiring, or we need, you know, our, our computers to have this much memory or, or whatever else it may be. And, you know, who ended up making the, the spacesuits, as I understand it, I may have this wrong, but as I understand it, the spacesuit material was made by Playtex. You know, because they just had the best, you know, fabric science or whatever you call it, materials engineers for that kind of problem. And so I think that's really, you know, the starting point. And that starts in recruiting. That starts in how you talk to the mission of your team with your parents, you know, with your family, with your kids. What is the the mission, the sense of urgency, the opportunity? And is it just, you know, pouring out of you? And from an interview and saying, look, this is what we're trying to go and do and getting people excited and getting people like JFK did, getting people to say, boy, I see where I fit. You know, th- there's this idea of diversity and inclusivity and, and now being expanded to diversity, inclusivity and belonging. And I think the idea of belonging is so critical to doing high performance creative work because you have to feel like you belong there. You have to feel as though your ideas are valuable. You know, you have to feel as though you have the support of the people around you, that people are going to listen, that you're able to listen, you know, and that you're not always looking over your shoulder. And so that that's kind of the next piece. The first piece is really about vision and energy and, and then autonomy within that and saying, look, you're going to come here. You're going to be a part of this team and people are going to listen to you. You know, if you're a musician and a session musician, you come in and you say, boy, you know, I, I just really think that we could rearrange the tune this way. Well, OK, this is this is an environment where you can say that, you know, and making that very clear to people. And what happens is better and better people want to become part of that team. The more you live up to that promise, it's this idea of what's the opposite of a, a micromanager, a macro manager. It's like, how do you become a macro manager? where it's very clear to people on the team, here's your box. Within your box, you can try stuff. Within your box, you can fail. Within your box, you know, you can really move and try things and not fear any kind of consequences, really. And that box may be very small, and it probably ought to be very small at at, at first and and then grow over time. And so then the third piece there is attracting great people, bringing the best out of those people, and then showing the world that. I mean, we pull people in all the time. Come walk around. Come have a coffee. Come, you know, sit with the team. See how we work. And think about whether it's for you. And what people end up finding is they do want to come and be a part of it. And the main reason is it's not me. It's not even the mission necessarily. It's the peers. And so you can snowball in this direction. You know, they say, A players hire A players, B players hire C players. Well, okay, maybe that's true. I don't know. But what I do know is that when I can hire somebody who is significantly better than me, they hire people who are better than them. And now you're cooking, you know, and and developing people through their career and bringing out the best. That's how you start to scale to, to your question. That's how you start to really do this beyond, you know, two or three people 
working together at, at a little startup or on a little team and start to get to a point where, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of people working on this product and they still feel totally invested in solving customer problems. You know, and we have a culture where customer problems and solving hard problems is the most prized and rewarded thing you can do. And we give you all the tools to do it. So th that's a big investment, you know, and within a larger enterprise, it can be a really scary one where, you know, as a leader and a manager, boy, prepare yourself to walk into meetings and say, we don't have the answer yet. Prepare to say, we didn't make the deadline. Prepare to take the blame. And then go back to your team and get them super excited. But that team is going to win. You know, small, lean, autonomous teams that have a very strategic mindset can connect the dots all the way between the macro opportunity of the business and the challenges it faces today down to the work that they are doing every minute and every hour. Let them connect those dots. Help them connect those dots. And don't just give them work orders. Right. Because you'll never connect the dots as well and as completely as they will in their own imagination if you give them the chance. Yeah. Great advice. I mean, these are the principles that we've also seen. We we're just talking about becoming your best, the 12 principles of highly successful leaders before we started our our show today. And, you know, this is built on 40 years of research of what outstanding high performers do over and over again. And this is what Christopher is talking about today. These are the things. This is not rocket science, but it's, it's not easy to do. I mean, leadership is creating this vision that's exciting. I'm so glad you brought this up. And once you have that, then it is, you know, getting the people around you that can buy into that and create this environment where they can thrive. I love what you're describing. And that they take responsibility for the outcome and you make the adjustments and you build high trust so that you can solve problems and you make it fun. Way to go. That's good stuff. Oh, I was just thinking I read a quote yesterday, Christopher, because one of the grand things of leadership is this ability to say, hold it, to set the direction, the vision. And, and sometimes we actually can be limited by that or turbo thrust forward with it. Here's the quote. Without leaps of imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. That was, mm. a, yeah, great, by Gloria Steinman. And I love it. That's just part of what we do every day. And you don't get too big for it. It's about a changing world and, and solving problems and finding joy in your work. So that, that was like so fun. Hey. Woo, way to go, Christopher. Well done. <laughs> well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, this may seem off topic, but I really don't think it is. You know, I, I was putting my son to bed the other night. He's six. And he asked me a question. He said, you know, could be because he and his sister, they're four and six and they're wildly into imaginative play. From the minute they get up, they want to be ninjas or, or princesses or, or lizards or whatever. And it's totally real to them. And it's this amazing thing. And as a grown up, you know, you get wrapped up in it and have a ton of fun with them. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, grownups don't want to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, we're trying to have a grown-up conversation. We're, we're having a dinner party or whatever it is. So my son asked me, he says, why don't grownups like playing as much as we do? And, and I said, it was a brilliant question, right? And, and I said to myself, or I said to him, I should have just said to myself, but I, I just told him honestly, I said, well, you know, as you grow up, you lose your imagination. And I had the look on his face, this was the scariest thing that I could possibly tell him. I mean, when he found out that animals and humans pass away, that he's, he sort of said, you know, boy, that's sad, but that kind of makes sense. Uh -huh. This didn't make sense. Wow. The, the I love it. That yeah. As he, at his next birthday, this world that he creates for himself is going to be less vivid. And that by the time he's my age, that world won't exist at all. This was the greatest possible loss that I could ex that I could <laughs> explain to him. And I, I had to walk it back a little bit. <laughs> and in walking it back with him, I really sort of traversed what was important to me in leadership and working with creative people, which is, OK, what are all of the things that we have to do as grownups to not lose our imagination? Why don't we speak up? Why don't we suggest these things? Why don't we play these games? Why don't we do this stuff? Because we're scared. 
And what are we scared of? Well, we're scared of how we're going to look. We're gonna, okay, great. So if you pull all those threads and then you go back to your team and you go back to walking in the building Monday morning and you say, you start looking for them. And you start looking for them. You start looking for the reward system and you start looking for things you can do that will get you in trouble for using your imagination. Google calls it psychological safety. They, they did this huge project, Aristotle, on, on the factors that lead to creative, innovative teams. And psychological safety was it's sort of a hierarchy. That's the foundation. You know, what I love about HubSpot is we'll be halfway through some huge executive presentation and somebody will raise their hand and say, I didn't understand that last part. From the CEO to to me, to somebody on my team, I mean, if we don't understand an acronym or, or we're lost in the conversation, we'll ask a friend or we'll stop the conversation and say, boy, I, this seems really important. Could somebody explain this to me? And it creates this teaching hospital kind of environment where it's like, oh, yeah, great. You know, hop up at the at the whiteboard and explain this. I have one-on-ones with my boss who used to be a public company CFO. And I'll say to him in a one-on-one, hey, I don't actually understand the difference between you know, <laughs> bookings and billings in, in this context with blah, blah, blah. And he'll go, oh, okay, let me explain it to you. And he'll grab a, white, a whiteboard and he'll explain it to me. And you know, when, you're, when you show people that, and as a leader, you have to do that. You can't expect your team to do that. You have to actually be the one raising your hand, stopping the meeting and saying, I didn't get that. And so it really starts at the top. But it creates an environment where people can kind of say, you know, here's where I feel comfortable. Here's where I am not comfortable. And from there, the daydreaming starts to happen, you know, because it, it becomes cool to daydream. It becomes cool to ask questions and be curious. And that link between curiosity and dreaming from there, once that's happening, getting it down into project plans and, you know, decisions that need to be made is not actually the hard part. <laughs> the hard part is getting people to kind of speak up and say, boy, maybe we're thinking about this totally the wrong way. You know, hear me out on this. And then boom. And, and then have the room kind of sit and listen and react. That, I think, is, is really what we're after here. And uh, I find it amazing that my son <laughs> picked up on it so quickly and really, in many ways, showed it to me. Oh, that's a great story and a breath of fresh air. So fun. What's his name? His name is Caleb. Oh, that's great. What a fun story. And how important it is that this is one of the things we create within our organizations. That kind of feeling. I mean, man, we got to totally push back on that. We got to let give air to our creativity, to our yes. imagination. And, and it's so magical of what it can do for all of us. Well, good. Well, I'm just always shocked by how fast time goes. And we're at the end of our show today. This has been fun, Christopher. Now, any final tips that you might be able to leave with our listeners that you think would be helpful in their success? Well, I'll put a plug in to come work with us. You ah, know, there we go. <laughs> I love it. I mean, we have hundreds of open roles, hubspot.com slash jobs. Put the imposter syndrome uh, aside that we all have and go raise your hand on there. You know, we're, we're leaning more into remote work. We have eight offices around the world. There are tons of opportunities across all, all of our departments, sales, product, you name it. Come talk to us and have a conversation about joining the team. We'd love to have that conversation. Beyond that, you know, <laughs> try to get enough sleep, you know, hug your kids tight. Uh, what, can I, what can I say? I'm, I'm, I'm not the wisest person in terms of advice, but um, I'm learning every day and I'm, I'm trying to have fun doing it. How good. I'd say that's pretty good advice. <laughs> get sleep and hug each other and be kind to people and, and have fun. So good going. So how can people find out about what you're doing? In addition to HubSpot.com slash jobs, check out the band, theproviders.com. We are releasing music consistently. It's just sort of this modern format where we're going to be releasing music on an ongoing basis and telling the story around our creative process. It's going to be a ton of fun. So people can go to theproviders.com and pop their email address in and, and be a part of that story with us. We'd, we'd love that. Great. Well, thank you so much, Christopher, for being part of this show today. It's been a lot of fun. It's been great take-home value. It's been inspirational, a lot of creative ideas and encouraging. So thanks so much. It's been a thrill to have you. All right. My pleasure. And Steve, thank you very much for uh, opening your doors here. I hope to have another conversation with you in the future. You bet. For all of our listeners, man, you're a big part of this magical 
feeling of touching everybody that you do that have the chance to lift with the type of things we've been talking about. You're amazing. It's an honor to be able to associate with you and have you with us today. We know your time's valuable and and you lift us as much as maybe you might get something that is an idea that's helpful to you. So we wish you the best today and every day. This is Steve Schallenberger with Becoming Your Best, wishing you a great day. Thank you for listening. Would you like help to apply the 12 principles of highly successful leaders in your life, in your family, or in your organization? Call us today at 888-690-8764 to speak with a helpful representative to evaluate your situation and how we can help. Or you can visit becomingyourbest.com. Whether it's a corporate training event, keynote, workshop, trainer certification, or personal coaching, it would be our pleasure to serve your needs. Once again, call 888-690-8764 or visit becomingyourbest.com today.